Welcome back out to the greenhouse. We're out here doing a very cool experiment today. And if you're new to the channel and you like all of these free heating experiments and all the stuff we do on this channel, please hit that like, subscribe, notification bell. It helps us out in sharing the content and growing our channel and business. Thank you very much for all the subscribers we've gotten recently. We really appreciate everybody checking out the channel and checking out all of our playlists, all of the cold weather heating, some of the warm weather, some of our chicken videos. There's lots to check out. So we are picking up where we left off last winter. We had a failed experiment. I've got some dirt in my eyes, so it looks like I was crying or something. <laughs> so we're trying to pick up where we left off last winter and pick up our failure. So we showed a lot of failure last winter with our Jean Payne because we built our system, tried to collect some methane and harvest methane from our Jean Payne heating, but it really didn't accumulate to a whole lot. We didn't have the proper back pressure. A lot of people have been asking about how that worked for us. The heating aspect worked very well. We got about seven, seven and a half months of free heat out of that pile. So that was excellent, but we did not capture any methane. So the methane capture kit didn't work as well as we thought it was going to. I didn't have enough pressure. I buried it about two and a half, three feet into the pile, but it just didn't have enough. So we have to enclose that somehow and capture it and the methane rises so we can build some type of cap system. So I've been busy with this and I'm going to build some type of tarp capture system, some type of cap we can put over to capture methane from our compost system. But that is for a later date. We're going to get all of that rolling here soon because the winter will be here before we know it and we're going to need all of that extra free heat. So we're going to be picking up leaf bags this fall. Stay tuned for all all of the updates as far as free heating goes but this methane capture kit is going to be for cooking and stuff like that and heating water and just doing experiments in the greenhouse this winter hopefully we can have enough production from this system early on that we can really get some experiments going we're going to order one more part I need to order myself some type of Bunsen burner or burner system where I can plug into and have a safe burn where I'm not using some type of DIY system so I don't have any back burn I'm going to run the system through my own homemade water bubbler and the water system is just going to be to protect me from any type of back burn so it will just filter it out and separate the two systems from the burning system to the feeding system so growing up in the Western world we're pretty well taught that waste is just to be gotten rid of uh, any type of waste at all so all waste is no good we're not supposed to use it not supposed to recycle any waste I mean most of the plastic that we're recycling isn't even being recycled right so we're not really recycling anything and the mentality is just forget about it once it's gone we just don't see it anymore until it pops up as a huge problem out in the middle of the ocean or things like that so there's a huge barrier between what we're seeing and what's really going on obviously it's becoming a huge problem and we're all becoming aware of it but if we take all of those wasted resources we can turn those around and turn them into some type of biofuel there's a lot of people repurposing things and finding lots and lots of ways to reuse all of that waste and finding a better purpose for it than just being discarded at all costs. We can simply create our own homestead self-sufficiency by recycling animal waste, all of the manure and human manure also. All of your farm waste and all organic matter. If you have a large enough biogester or biodigester system, you're able to harvest methane from a whole lot larger materials. We're going to be restricted on what we can put in here because of the size and diameter of all of the pipes and stuff but we are going to be able to harvest some methane from this system we're composting animal manure it all just gets lost to the atmosphere so if we can recycle and harvest that there's a lot of slurry systems on the farms and big farms but there's a lot that is lost to the atmosphere and that is creating a lot of problems for us with the greenhouse gases methane has 200 percent more infrared opacity meaning that it holds 200 percent more more infrared heat than carbon dioxide does which is the other leading greenhouse gas so if we can cut down on methane production we can also cut down on the greenhouse gases carbon dioxide is not nearly as volatile as methane is up in the atmosphere when we burn that methane we're creating co2 and h2o so we're creating carbon dioxide and water so the byproducts are not as bad as what we're actually burning itself and as we use these types of systems we're able to get a little bit of raw organic fertilizer in the form of liquid 
and solid if you dry it out. So we have our drain tube here. I'm gonna go through the whole explanation of this. I just wanted to talk about all of this and kind of what's wrong with the system that we're using today. A lot of this stuff can be returned to the land and not wasted. We shouldn't be throwing any organic matter into the landfills. We shouldn't be throwing anything in landfills at all. We can totally be recycling everything at the right level and with the right mindset we could probably create items that don't even need to go to a landfill or that can just be composted or just simply reused at home with a good repurpose. So there's about two ways to build a system to harvest the methane. So you can build a system like this with some type of solid recycled system. I got this tank for free or this 55 gallon drum and you can use some type of huge bag system. They make bags just for composting like this or bio milling so they use them in Africa a lot they use huge bio millers and they will power a whole village for a year or something like that off a large bio miller so this is a very well-known practice and I'm just building my own version of this and it's very very simple to do once you understand the basic principles of what you're actually doing so let's explain why we're collecting the methane we are trying to collect methane to burn it because it creates a lot of heat. It creates a lot of BTUs, and BTUs are British thermal units. One BTU or one British thermal unit is the equivalency of heat that it requires to raise one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. Based off water's highest density being at about 39 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's a direct correlation between the BTUs created by the methane and the amount that we're able to burn and the amount we're able to use for heating a food source, heating water, heating the greenhouse, just a whole lot of different experiments. So the BTUs that are created are very interesting to check out. So a human creates about 600 BTUs per day of methane. And that equals about one cubic foot of methane or enough BTUs to heat about one kettle of water. Now a chicken creates about 300 BTUs, which is about a half a cubic foot or enough to do about half of a kettle of water. Now once you get into the cows and the pigs, you're talking more like 4,800 to 56, 5,500 BTUs and you're heating five to six, seven kettles of water with what a pig or cow creates off of their waste in just one day. All this methane is going to be produced between 90 and 100, 105 degrees and that is about body temperature. So body temperature is the ideal conditions for producing the most production on your methane. Now, as far as methane production goes, we can start harvesting methane as little as about a week if you use the right things. But if you're using fresh stuff, it's going to take maybe 30, 45 days, maybe a month to a month and a half, and you might start seeing production from this. You might have some inflation on your storage tank. And so let's start the breakdown of this. I wanna talk about about everything we've got going on here and how we're going to harvest the methane from this 55 gallon drum. So breaking this down here, we've got this outer tube and this tube right here, let's turn it to the side, is going to be for expulsion of fluids and solids if they get up to that point. It's only a two inch pipe right here. So we're just going to be keeping a bucket underneath this and as this rises and fills up, all of the waste will run down because we we want to keep an air gap all the time so we're able to produce methane and have some air in there so it's not just fluid bubbling up into our lines and stuff like that so this is our expulsion overflow so we just use very simple PVC we took a coupler and we were able to screw each side and basically just attach this so this outside piece here exactly the same on the inside so we've got two pipes here going through and down and it looks like an upside down U. So the water and waste can go up and filter out and then drop without having to waste any methane. There's no ability for the methane to escape because all of the methane will be trapped up top and all of the waste will be plugging this pipe up. So a very, very minute amount might creep up from the waste inside the tube. I just used a very simple little hole saw to drill the hole out for this. So my son had to use his arm and help me get all this together because my arm wouldn't fit in here. So if you can get one that actually unseals and has the whole lid, unless you're drilling larger holes in it, unless you have smaller hands. My, my hands are too big to fit in the holes that they have with the caps on them. So I had to use my kids to help me with that. So the actual caps here came with the seal. This is the cap here. I gotta cover my face so the camera will focus on the 
part I'm trying to show you, so this is the cap. We've got the little barb. I've got it jankily rigged together so it is not going to come out and it's pretty well airtight. I screwed it in and heated it up when I screwed it in so it was pretty tight. That just goes right in the top up here so this piece is going to be actually where the methane tubes come out. Alright, I'm going to grab this camera here. Oh, let's come up in the sunshine. It has been so darn hot lately. I'm wearing pants today because it was probably about 47, 48, 50 degrees, something like that. It was pretty darn chilly today. So here we've got the top of the tank. We've got the cap that came with it here. So I showed you this. This is the cap, very simple. It screws right in, nice airtight fitting. So that cap used to go to that. It was a very easy tap into that. We've got all our lines here. All this hose was from our last experiment. We've got ourselves a nice on off ball valve here. And these are just a quarter inch nipple, quarter inch fitting. Very, very simple. I spent like maybe $30 on fittings all together last year. And I went and bought myself two more nipples. That was our barbs, that was about it. We've got our storage tank over here. So this little rubber hose, you can see that we took the bead out. Right in there, there used to be a bead inside of it. Took the bead out so it's able to freely fill up and deflate so it doesn't have anything trapping the air, no seal, no gasket. So that is free flowing. Coming back over to our tank here, we've got the actual feed line. So I was talking about this. We've got a nice mouth here, nice expanded mouth with our two inch hole. So we're looking at maybe three foot of piping from this all the way down. And I apologize, I put this together ahead of time. This isn't fully fixed but it is pretty well airtight. What I was getting at here is that this feed tube goes all the way down to the bottom below where this is so what we feed in is always going to be below the level of liquid that we have so it never has a chance to re-burp all of the methane back out all the methane will be trapped up high and all of our inputs will just keep going in and be getting forced down and pushed in and they'll just continue to break down and as these inputs go in they'll go down break down and then they will fill up and we can actually flush our system with water if we have to we can fill this tank up with water and it will flush everything out and we can clean the whole system and have it start it anew so once this methane starts producing we have all of these lines and I don't have this put together because it's not ready and it's not in the place it's going to go you can see that we've got lots of moving parts it's going down around and on the other side of the tomatoes so it's not in its permanent place I just wanted to show all of these parts because this is complete all I have to do is basically start feeding it once I get the lines together so this right here is our main line that is where the methane is going to come that's why we put this barb here so all the methane will come out into the line right here and then we have this T fitting so we've got a simple T fitting there and one of the T's is going to run to the storage tank our storage tank here being this line so we'll have a hose running to this and it will start to inflate and then we're going to have the other part of the T running in to here this bubbler so let me show you what I rigged up for pretty darn cheap here we've got this old pickle jar we've got two nipples there and one of the nipples goes down and this is going to be full with water so this line is going to be running in and methane will collect down bubble up through the water and then it will be able to escape because this one is just at the very top it doesn't have any hose or anything all the methane will rise up through the water and it will escape so the last step to hooking this up is running the bubbling methane to an on off switch so you run this right to your burner so you're able to control whether your gas is on or off just like a propane tank so this is going to be very cool to hook up and once I get it all set up I'm going to bring another video I just wanted to run through the parts run through everything I've got going on and like like I said I've got like $30 invested in this from last winter and this winter I bought $12 worth of PVC so really didn't have a whole lot invested in here but I really did not collect the methane I wanted to last winter so I really wanted to get this going and I wanted to do it when it was still warm enough I got a couple months of 
decently warm temperatures, warm being above freezing. So I don't want this to go into winter and not have any production. I want to be able to see what I can experiment with before it gets too cold. So I'm really excited to get this thing going. Got the whole build here. All these parts are ready to go. All I got to do is set it up. We're going to come down here and we're going to set it up where we had this little rooting bed. This is beautiful mortgage lifter tomato got some more of them. got all these peppers down here just doing amazing they love the greenhouse atmosphere look at those healthy leaves i mean they don't like the shade cloth as much as the tomatoes do but they're doing well they're producing so we're getting something we got this raised bed here or this little bed we created so that is the new spot this was our rooting bed we're going to pull a lot of this apart and level it out and then we're going to get our methane capture kit in this area so it's got a nice sunny location and it's going to be located down by all of our other stuff all of the heating experiments so we're going to be able to burn this and be able to put it over by our stove or put our bunsen burner on our stove so we have a nice safe spot the stove hasn't been used in a little while here so it's collecting some dust we've got to get it cleaned out and ready for the winter time we got to get our collection of wood we got a whole bunch of old pallets and wood to chop up so there's always lots of work to do on the homestead and i've got to get the video filmed for all the damage we received in the storms here recently about two three weeks ago serious lightning and some storm damage that i want to go over and i keep saying that i just haven't got the video filmed yet because i gotta get the parts ordered here so i'm gonna get this methane barrel situated i gotta clean that bed up over there so i wanted to bring everybody this i got my shade cloth hooked up because it's so darn hot out lately this morning was chilly but it's going to be like 90 or something today almost so the humidity is ridiculous and it is darn hot so i gotta go switch to shorts and get the rest of this work done so i'd like to thank everybody thank you to all the new subscribers and if you haven't subscribed yet please just hit that subscribe button it's totally free it helps us out with our channel and sharing all of this content and if anybody has any questions please drop it in the comments below and i'd like to thank you guys again for checking out the channel and watching these videos